911. What is your emergency? I need an ambulance. My husband, we were like, fine. We were just about to have dinner, and he's having trouble breathing, and he can't walk. I need you like a rising sun. Let the light pour in and the colors run Like midnight skies need northern stars I think home is right where you are And words get caught on my tongue Honey, I need you, you're the only one Good morning. It is so cold right now. We got our first frost of the year, so all of the leaves are really crunchy, and I don't know, it just feels um, like the seasons are definitely changing. It's kind of hard to put into words. Like, obviously, the leaves are crunchy and everything, but I think it's more so the stillness of the forest and the light. Like, just look at it right now. The smoke is just hanging in the trees. There's not a breeze. It's, um, it's pretty magic, I have to say. It is truly remarkable just how fast the frost kills the crops. We were out here last night and everything was thriving and doing so well. And now look at it all. The tomatoes are like completely dead. They're like all the leaves are crispy. Same with the butternut squash. It's kind of sad if you think about like we put yeah. so much time and love and energy into the garden and Jack Frost comes one <laughs> night and ruins it for us. That's kind of like the downside I guess of living in Canada. Like we put all of this work all year into our gardens and then this time of year everything goes away but it's I, also really special. I told you we should have moved somewhere tropical. <laughs> yeah that would be nice but it's like the seasonality of it is I yeah. don't know there's something it's magic true. about it too yeah it keeps it like there's always something like i love fall and then we've got winter coming which i mean take it or leave it but then we get back to spring and summer so <laughs> although the frost burning off the panels like we oh, wow. it, it was so beautiful we were just sipping our coffee watching it and we were saying like it won't be long until we're skating on the pond again yeah like, I don't i'm know. excited yeah the oh. seasonality of it all do you want to know magic. what i'm also excited for what? these turnip and carrots yeah so same. It, i think we should start with them because it has taken everything in me this summer not to dig around and see how well they're doing um i don't have as much self-control as todd as you can see this is my sneaky one where i <sighs> keep an eye on how it's doing this is why i don't buy gifts for tyler until like after his birthday or after <laughs> christmas because he snoops for things up too what do you want to pull first um, I think the carrot. Yeah, which one do you want to do first? You pick the mm, carrot. I think that... This one? Yeah, he looks chonky. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Girthy. Girthy. <laughs> it's like the size of a potato. Doesn't that smell oh, good? Oh, wow. Yeah, and apparently you can make pesto out of the greens. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> As fun as this has been, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. One carrot down. <laughs> yeah, one carrot down. <laughs> a massive garden to go. Let's just get into it. Let's just start pulling. You know what? It's not the size of the carrot. It's how delicious it tastes. <laughs> Put that on a mug. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> within yeah. limits. There are limits. Whoa. Wow. Look at that thing. That's like the size of a sweet potato. That's actually unbelievable. That's pretty cool. Your breath fills my lungs, honey. I will show no grow. <laughs> it's gonna be hard with the innuendos this video. We are absolutely blown away with the carrots. Like, look at all of these. It's amazing compared to our onions. <laughs> the onions are a sad state of affairs, but we have the turnip. So 
which we're really hopeful for. Although Todd came up with a good idea for the onion. I think we're going to try that later. We're going to like roast them on the barbecue. Yeah. Whole. Well, like these little tiny ones, I'm not going to cut them up and make a, like put them on a sandwich. So if we just take the peeling off, barbecue it, I'm sure it'll be good. We'll get back to you on that. Yeah. But in the meantime, let's rip these turnips over the ground. Okay, do you want to do the first one? Yeah. Oh my God, Tyler. <laughs> Look at that thing! Wow. Oh my god, that's so cool! This is really exciting. Can I dig one out? Yeah, of course. I'm going for that one, right there. That big mama? Yeah. Okay, hold on, let's put him in our basket. Okay. We gotta start a new one for this one. Should've got more baskets. I know. We'll learn how to whittle them out of trees. <laughs> I would not put it past us. Alright, you go for one. I'm doing this one. <laughs> wow. wow. It's the size of a baby's head. Maybe a bigger <laughs> that's than a, a big that's than a, a big toddler. baby. <laughs> We're not really sure how kids work. <laughs> Prayers to that lady. Wow, yeah. May she RIP. <laughs> Let's keep ripping them out. Alright. I'm so excited for these cabbage. Oh yeah, they're really big. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> you know what? I would have thought the root system would be a lot bigger considering Same. how big the plant is. So I'm pretty sure all this stuff just is nothing. It smells like cabbage. Yeah, well, I guess it is cabbage. <laughs> this just in, Tyler and Todd have solved another mystery. <laughs> Wow, Tyler, you've got such a massive eggplant. I got two eggplants now. <laughs> you don't find this on typical off-grid channels, I can tell you that. No. Anywhere we're digging in the yard, if we find worms, we move them into our garden beds, and that's because they eat the like decomposing matter in there and add nutrients back to the soil. So we're gonna put it back, and he's gonna help us for next year's garden. Should we take the compost over? Yeah. All right, getting started on tomato. Yeah, this one's gonna take a long time to do because there are just so many. We've been very fortunate every single year with our tomato plants. I think it's what probably does the best, like oh, consistently. Yeah. Very, very good. We should open up a ketchup company. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're doing is we're sorting them into three different categories because we wanna save as many of them as we can and food's so expensive. So these are the green, haven't started to ripen. We're gonna put them on the counter and keep our fingers crossed pile. And then this is the, they've started to ripen, so things are looking good for them pile. And then these are the ready to eat and go in salads pile. You know what, honestly, leave it to Todd to over complicate, but make it very organized. What I'm doing is when we're done, just cause they overgrew so much, is just like, you can snip off the thing, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. And then we can just throw it in the bin to go to compost. I'm gonna have a little snack. We're not Ew. gonna get anything except for the green and <laughs> partially ripened ones. All right, let's do it. Wind is only moving pollen good for making honey cotton. Rain is only water falling good for growing happy garden. Like, look at the root system on that. No wonder they did so well. Yeah. These raised garden beds we built though, I think that that's why, like we put in the work, we did the hookah culture, we yeah. put in the compost, like all of those things, I think really added to the tomatoes. I also put chicken manure in it this year for the first time. I read that that was good. Really? Yeah. <laughs> we got shitty tomatoes. Come on down and get your shit grown tomatoes. <laughs> it gives a hint of chicken with a shit aftertaste. Delicious. So we just finished pulling out all the tomatoes and we got such a haul. The wooden crate is almost full with all of the red and the green. Our thought is we either throw them out now or we throw them out down the road if it doesn't work, but we're gonna just 
bring them in the dome and hopefully ripen them up. Yeah, I don't know if anybody knows the answer to this or not, but we were thinking like if we left them on the stem and brought them in, like you know how sometimes when you buy tomatoes in the grocery store, they come in that like container with the vine on it? Yeah. Maybe that's why I'm realizing. Or we did not do that though. If they need sun though, we can take them to a tanning booth. <sighs> okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Peppers? Sure. Sun is only slow and constant. Good for making winter soft and seasons only. Nature calling, always changing. Soon and often. All right, look where we started. how beautiful this is. So we've got dragon peppers, spicy chili peppers, habaneros, just so many different types. It's um, it's really awesome. It's gonna be really good. I'm excited. What do you think, buddy? <laughs> you want some pepper? No, I'm holding out for the tomatoes. <laughs> You're so dirty, buddy. All right, I'll run this over to the compost. Okay. I had planted a bunch of seeds in the dome back in like late winter, early spring. Well, Squirrel, our cat, knocked them all over and this was the only one that survived of that first wave. So, kind of cool that we got so much produce out of it. Yeah. All right, let's snip these up. Okay. Hard stems on them. I mm -hmm. could break them off like a cucumber. Pretty cool. It's really cool. So now I think the first thing would be taking out all these water lines. Mm -hmm. What's wrong? You fading? This is just such a huge garden. Like, you could feed a village with us. Yeah. You fading on me? A little. How are you doing? Good. Do you want a little pick me up? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, why don't, do you want to pull these out and just like set them off to the side and then I'll go make us a little pick me up, okay? We are making some really good time up at the garden. Like honestly, I thought this was going to be so much slower and a multi-day project, but it's looking like we're going to get it all done today, which is just really exciting, especially with everything else that we have going on here. But we were getting a little sluggish, so I came down to the dome to make a little pick-me-up for both of us, and that's thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Athletic Greens. AG1 is the ultimate all-in-one nutritional formula jam-packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. It's keto, paleo, and vegan friendly, and Tyler's favorite part comes to the budget. Rather than taking all these other supplements and minerals and vitamins that we were before, we were able to get rid of all of those, and now we just have one easy to consume product in our fridge. To make it, it's so easy. You just add one scoop to 12 ounces of water, throw in some ice, give it a shake, and you're good to go. You're getting all of that good stuff. I find a lot of other supplements have that chalky, bitter taste, but not AG1. It is so subtly sweet, and as you can tell, we've been having it for almost three years. We cannot speak highly enough about it. So if you wanna find out how AG1 can help you on your health journey, make sure you use the link in our description box down below. If you click that link, they're gonna give you five free travel packs as well as a one-year supply of the vitamin D drops on your first purchase. But for now, I'm gonna get these shook up and back up to the garden. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Do you feel eight years old? Do you feel eight years old? Or do you feel 56? Do you feel 56 in dog years? Oh, oh. oh he's so strong. He's strong boy. He's Thank strong you. for eight. He's a strong eight-year-old boy. Wow. Wow, Eddie. So we're not super optimistic on the potatoes. A lot of you pointed out that because they died, like all of the green tops, they're probably not gonna grow that big. However, Mel did tell us that if you have really high green growth on the top, it will often lead to not many potatoes beneath, so. I think Mel was just trying to set us up for um, failure, like psych so. us out. Cause he's really, he thinks he's the best potato grower. So we're gonna see. We should have a potato contest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready? Where do you want to start? Oh, 
So we just finished the reds and we're moving on to the whites. I have to say I'm pretty impressed with the haul we're getting. Like yeah. it's way more than I was thinking. We let Mel get in our heads for the summer. He was definitely right though. Like oh, yeah. because they died off, they grew way better underground. Um yeah, very shocked with how much we got. Yeah, I'm happy. Pretty exciting. I know, we'll be able to eat starches for the winter. <laughs> we're gonna have a good Thanksgiving, that's for sure. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. Ooh, nice shot. Trick shot. Money shot. Do you think that roasting potatoes are just premature big size potatoes? Well, carrots. Are baby carrots a different carrot? I don't know. So we just finished all the potatoes and we are blown away. Some of them are really weird looking and are kind of like deformed, but I feel like it adds to it. We're there's a lot. There's a lot. Um, I think that this is probably the biggest white one. That's probably the biggest red one. Most of them though are like little like nuggets like this. They're cute. <laughs> like that would be so good on the barbecue and tinfoil with a little bit of olive oil and then it'll just get so soft that you. We were wondering though, like you know in the grocery store how you can buy like regular sized potatoes and then you can buy like the little roaster ones. Do you think that the roasting potatoes are just early like cropped big ones? I think so. I really do. Yeah. They just like kind of stop it. Oh yeah. Um, I think it's gonna storm. Yeah, my left breast is swollen. It's gonna rain. Oh my god, Todd. <laughs> so we've got this whole area good to go. Now we're gonna move on to the onion. I'm ready for these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Do you wanna leave them for the winter? Or like we can check and see if we can leave them for the winter? I think we leave them. That's garlic, I think. No, I think it's onion as well. Like they're a weird one, they like it cold. I don't think that's how it works. I do. I don't know. Either way, I feel like I'm fading. I don't think I got much more in me today. This is this, this has been a lot. a lot. Yeah. Like I'm ready for some food. Aren't you big guy? He's just He's doing his thing. Exploring in the woods. Um, yeah, I don't know that these can be left, so I think we we might just count these as a loss. Oh, they smell good though. It smells like dirty onion. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna run to the market and pick us up some stuff to. I'm gonna plant this make. and dig it up in May. <laughs> All right, I'll be back in a bit. Okay. I've just been sitting in the garden and just feeling a little like. I guess mixed emotions. I'm really excited for fall, but I was really hopeful that we were gonna be able to do that big preserve with all the vegetables that we were planning to do. But unfortunately the reality is with all the setbacks we encountered with the house and just how much more work there is involved in building a house than we thought there was, that we just don't have the time to do that. So I saw a really cool idea online where I can actually repurpose some of our kale. So we have all this beautiful kale still thriving because it does well in the colder temperatures. I wonder if the purple part tastes different than the white part. I'm gonna have to try that. We can make it feel like home. Let's go.
the start. I friggin' knew that you were gonna do this. Do you like it? It looks really good. Yeah. Oh, the kale. Yeah, that's all from the garden. That's, that's nice. why I said save the kale, not the whales. <laughs> It's nice you didn't have to throw it away. Yeah, and oh, we can still eat it because it's cold tolerant. It so it'll still beautiful. be alive for like a month or two. Come here, you didn't have to go. Well, you didn't have to go get dinner. Well, it you did. really good. <laughs> yeah, I did eat that. Wow. And look what's over there. What? You're vlogging this? Yeah. Todd never vlogs, you guys. I don't know how well it's gonna turn out. It may just be like one of those things where one second it's not decorated, the next it is. <laughs> Todd has it in his head that I'm the creative one. That is so not the case. Look at this. You did really good. Give a thumbs up for Todd. This is so cute. And the little gourds. Oh, oh my gourd. Oh my gourd. Do you want to go have wine? No, it's been a long day. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to have wine? Do you want to have wine? I got you a little birthday treat. I got birthday you a little birthday treat. treat. Hi, squirrel. Hi, squirrel. Come on, buddy. This won't come as a surprise to anyone, but instead of relaxing, Todd wants to hang mugs underneath well, the kitchen. It makes sense. I'm getting annoyed with them being on the counter here. So I picked up these little like hooks and I figured the mugs can kind of just like it's a, it's a really good idea. Yeah. We don't have a lot of counter space or like cabinet space. We have more than we did a couple months ago, but it's still not like a typical house. Yeah. Well, obviously it's completely open in here, but I'm enjoying my glass of wine and kind of just keeping Todd company. Not really helping out too oh, much. you are. What? Keeping me company is a huge help. Yeah? Yeah. So what we're gonna do is put the first one up. Okay. And then we're gonna figure out our spacing off of that because I don't know how else to do it. Now that we solved this problem, <coughs> I'm sure we'll find another one, but I think we can start making dinner. Do you wanna put jammies on? Yeah. I'm done with these clothes for the day. All right. I'm tired. <laughs> Head on over to our OnlyFans to watch us change clothes. <laughs> That's right where it is. That's right where it is. Are you diabetic at all? No. Not They are testing your sugars, your ketones. They're a little high. Dr. Kennedy, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. You are a pain like this before? Never. I'm just gonna look at your blood work and stuff, okay? And then we'll make some decisions. But low down like that, I mean, talk about bowel, bladder, that kind of stuff, right? So this is Tordal, kind of like Advil, uh, but it works a little faster. And then we're gonna try a little bit of morphine as well. I'm here taking the CT. Okay. okay. <laughs> So just a quick update, I had a CT scan a few hours ago and they found a kidney stone, but they also found air trapped in different parts of my chest cavity. So now I'm gonna get another CT scan of my chest to figure out what's going on there. So that's what's happening. Did you die today? Yeah, riding around all over. <laughs> Once they found the kidney stone and that issue was identified. The lungs that were in my chest, or the air in my chest cavity was caused by a perforation somewhere along that track from like retching and like the pain and like all of that and like the expansion. So it caused like somewhere, some sort of a tear. I could pop you like a balloon. Oh, and I have a juice box tomorrow morning. I'll just stick my straw in your chest like I do my juice box. Oh my God. I hope that they can say we can go home now. Yeah. This has been a long 24 hours. Yeah. Just getting ready to go in for CT scan number three today. Um, I have to drink a fluid this time that's gonna light up everything inside to see what's going on. Sometimes when young people, young healthy people cough a little too hard, a little, a little air pocket in their lung can, can burst. How much of this do I have to drink? At least half. Okay. Can I plug my nose? You want everywhere for you to get it down. I recommend shoving 
have a taste. Okay. No? Uh, wasn't the lemonade you expected? <laughs> How are you doing? Good. Had a nice sleep. I used your shoes as an ass cushion and your jacket as a blanket. Yeah. Let me show them what your setup is. <laughs> That's my chair. Yeah, well, mine now. Yeah. You got the bed. <laughs> anyway, um, we're just gonna wait and I think I'm gonna have another nap. Yeah? Yeah. I'll catch up with you guys soon. <laughs>